all right so in this video we'll take a look at how to update the firmware on the radio transmitter when it's in the dfu mode so that way once you have the OpenTX firmware on this radio transmitter you won't have to use the ST-Link device anymore and you can simply connect the USB cable and update to the next version of OpenTX firmware but let's say if you have the original FlySky firmware on the radio transmitter and you want to update to the OpenTX firmware without having to use the ST-Link device because let's say you don't want to solder the pins on the motherboard or if you're not comfortable with soldering then and the dfu mode is an alternative which you can try so that's what we'll take a look at in this video so firstly i'll demonstrate with the stock firmware on the radio transmitter so you can see that i have the original fly sky firmware on the radio transmitter and with the stock firmware we cannot initiate the dfu mode from the switches or any commands as such so we have to jump two pins on the motherboard so that way the radio can enter the dfu mode and it's ready to accept the new firmware so let's take a look at the pins that we have to jump so remove the four screws on the back side to access the motherboard of the radio transmitter so once you remove all the four screws gently lift the back portion Now if you want to use the ST-Link device you can still do that and if you want you can also use this GST connector to plug in the ST-Link device and the pinout for the connector is also available on the RC group page and I'll also display the image over here so you can use that if you want but to enter the DFU mode with the stock firmware we have to jump the R53 pad which is over here and it's also labeled so you can read R53 and just below that we have R52 so I bricked my radio once while trying to update the firmware and to restore the firmware I had to jump the R53 pins to enter the DFU mode so that the radio could accept the firmware file and the exact process is what we can follow to install the OpenTX firmware on the radio transmitter and once the pads are bridged when we power on the radio transmitter the display will be off and the radio will be unresponsive because it's in the device firmware update mode and that's exactly what we want so let me bridge this r53 pad and just to remind you you will have to follow this step only once when you're updating from the stock firmware to the OpenTX firmware because with the latest OpenTX firmware we can initiate the dfu mode using the trim buttons and we'll take a look at that in the later half. So I've used two wires to solder the R53 pins and I've twisted them in order to create a bridge. And I've used a piece of tape just to prevent the wire from touching any other contact points. So now if I turn on the radio transmitter, the display should be off and the radio should act as if it's bricked. So let's see if I've successfully bridged the R53 pad. And I have. So right now the radio transmitter is in DFU mode. And you will have to follow this step only if you have the factory firmware on the radio transmitter and you don't want to use the ST-Link device. Otherwise, I would still suggest you use the ST-Link device because trying to bridge the two pads with the solder is also a bit tricky. And, and because you'll have to use a soldering iron anyways, using the ST-Link pads, I think is a much better option. So, but that's just my opinion. Now to install the firmware on the radio transmitter, you will have to download and install the STM32Q programmer. So I've linked this in the description and download the software and install it. And of course you'll have to also download the OpenTX firmware file. So go to the RC group page and 
and then download the latest version of OpenTX firmware. So click on the download from release page. So currently the latest is version 1.1 and there are three firmware files. So if you want to use ExpressLRS then download the ExpressLRS bin file and if you want to use your radio with a, a heli setup then you can use the heli file but most likely you would want to use the ExpressLRS file. So download the right firmware file you want to use. and install the STM32Q programmer. And while installing the software, the required drivers will also be installed. I already have the STM drivers installed on my computer, but if you don't, then you will see this window appear and you can decide to install it from here as well. So once you install the software and the drivers that are needed, you can now connect the USB cable to the radio transmitter. and then power up the radio transmitter and when the radio is in DFU mode after connecting it to the computer in the device manager you should see the radio transmitter appear as STM32 bootloader because the radio is in DFU mode so once you see this in the device manager you are good to go and we can launch the STM32Q programmer software and in the top right corner just beside the connect option make sure that you have selected USB and if you see multiple USB options then select the correct one so I only have one USB device that's in the DFU mode so I have that selected and I'll click on connect And once the connection is successful, we can flash the firmware file on the radio transmitter. But before we do that, we still have to make a few changes. So as per Mr. Mariano's instructions, we have to edit the address and the size field. So make sure that the address is exactly as I've displayed over here. And you set the size to this. And then to create a backup of the existing firmware file on the radio transmitter, click on this option and then select save as and then save the backup file so now the existing factory firmware is safely backed up on the computer and now we can proceed to install the OpenTX firmware so I'll click on open file and then select the OpenTX firmware file and click on open and then click on download to flash the firmware And once that's finished, you can click on disconnect, quit the STM32Q programmer and then power off the radio transmitter and remove the bridge from the R53 pad. Also disconnect the USB cable. If you want, you can remove the jumper wires or simply insulate the wires. And then power on the radio transmitter to see if everything is working. Yep, so. So everything seems to work. Whenever you flash OpenTX for the first time, I would recommend you factory reset the radio transmitter. So that is how you flash OpenTX firmware on the FlySky i6X using the DFU mode. If you have the factory firmware 
on the radio transmitter and after updating to the latest version of OpenTX firmware to initiate the DFU mode all you have to do is just hold the horizontal trim buttons inwards and then and then power on the radio transmitter and the radio is in DFU mode so for example I'll connect the USB cable I'll hold the horizontal trim buttons inwards and power on the radio transmitter and here in the device manager we can see STM32 bootloader device is detected so the radio is in DFU mode and then just as before using the STM32Q programmer we can select the latest version of OpenTX file and then flash it so I hope you found this video helpful and if you did you can like the video and subscribe to my channel if you still haven't flashed OpenTX firmware on this radio transmitter then I would highly recommend you do so and all the links are in the description and once again a huge thanks to Mr. Mariano and Janek for successfully implementing the OpenTX firmware on this radio transmitter in the next video we'll take a look at the express lrs version 2 settings that are available in the radio transmitter so stay tuned for that and thanks a lot for watching